No one in this room, in this country, in this world, was born a leader. Leaders are not born. They are made. They are built. They are forged in the fires of self-improvement. Everyone in this room, though, everyone in this country, in this world, has the potential and can acquire the tools to become leadership material. I would like to share with you tonight my top three essential principles for becoming leadership material. Number one, number one is having passion and enthusiasm. You must have passion and enthusiasm. Number two is that you must truly and confidently believe in yourself and your ideas. And number three, the third essential for becoming leadership material is that you must be liked by the people, you must be liked by the masses. Let's go over them one more time. Top three essentials. Number one, you must have passion and enthusiasm. Number two, is that you must be truly, you must truly and confidently believe in yourself and your ideas which you portray, which you give over. And number three is that you must be liked by the masses, by the people. Let's go over number one. Having passion and enthusiasm. The first thing that gets people to want to listen to what you have to say if they don't know you yet, they don't know if they like you, they don't know who you are, what attracts them first? What attracts them first is your passion and your enthusiasm about your ideas. When they see you're excited, people see, oh, look at that guy, he's excited about what he has to say, oh, let's go hear what he has to say. They don't even know what you want to talk about, they just want to hear it because you're so excited. Rabbi okay, Noach Weinberg, founder and dean of Eish HaTorah, great leader and teacher, once remarked an extremely powerful and inspiring quote, one of my favorite quotes I have ever heard. Find something that you are willing to die for. Find something that you are willing to die for and then live for it. Find something that you are willing to die for and then live for it. Live for your ideas passionately and with enthusiasm and you will bring the people to you to hear what you have to say. So number one is you must have passion and enthusiasm. Number two. Number two is that you must be true, you must truly and confidently believe in yourself and your ideas. There are five steps to achieve this essential. Number one is that you must go over and research all the evidence and all the sources that you can find that are out there. You must know all of them. Then number two, you must, you must test this, the evidence. See what works, what doesn't work, what makes sense, what doesn't, what's true, what's false. Then number three, is that you must memorize and master all your evidence, everything that you learned. You must know it cold, backwards and forwards. That way if anybody wants to test you on it or challenges you, you will know the material in every way. Number four, practice what you preach. Nobody wants to follow someone who says to do this and does that who does, says to do one thing and does something completely different. No one wants to follow someone like that. They want to see that you don't just say what you do, what you want to, be, what you want to do, but you actually do it. And they want to see that it works. Practice what you preach. <clears throat> Number five, the fifth step. The fifth step in becoming truly confident in yourself and your ideas and truly believing in yourself and your ideas is you are right until proven wrong. You're right until proven wrong. That doesn't mean you're closed-minded. No, that does not mean you're closed-minded. <clears throat> there once were two friends, 
two friends who are sitting in a cafe together discussing random topics. All of a sudden, one friend looks at the other and says, you know, my friend, I have to tell you, I am a changed man. The other friend looks at him like, what do you mean? What are you saying? So, a few months ago, I, I heard about this guru who had the secrets to life. And I figured, like, I want to know the secrets to life. So I, tra I got prepared, all these things, and I traveled into the Himalayas through harsh weather and frost and starvation and thirst. And I, I survived, I made it to his temple, I went to this guru, and I found out the secret to the meaning of life itself. I'm a changed man. I've seen the light. I'm changed. I'm a great person now. I understand why I'm alive. What do I have to do in this world? So my other friends look at him like, ah, uh, yeah, right, uh-huh, okay. What exactly did this guru tell you was the meaning of life? What was his secret? He's like, oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. see, I can't just tell him serious. Like, come on, come on, tell me what was the secret. What was the secret? Okay, okay, the secret to the meaning of life was life is like a river. Life is like a river. Isn't that great? Isn't that amazing? My friends look at him like, okay, I gotta get out of here. Like, what? Life is like a river? And? No, that's it. Life is like a river. Okay. Great. That's amazing. Wow. They, a few hours go by. Friends say goodbye. Have a nice day. And depart. This other friend is thinking like, I don't understand this. My friend, he, didn't, he can't just, he didn't, he's not just able to change like that. He's a strong, weird person. He believes in his ideas and he has his ideas about things. He can't, it's not easy to change him. There must be more to this story. I, I can't believe this. This guru, how did this guru, this guru change his life? I don't understand this. I gotta go see the guru myself. So, his friend packs up a lot of food and supplies and he finds out where this guru is. And he travels for months and months in the cold and fights the elements, fights starvation. Thirst, exhaustion, he makes it in the middle of the Himalayas to the Guru's temple. He makes it to the temple, he's like staring there. Oh, oh. He knocks on the door, the door opens. And there, sitting on his throne, is the Guru meditating. Oh. This guy walks over to the Guru and says, Master! My friend came here many months ago, and he said that you told him the meaning of life, the secrets to the meaning of life itself. I have traveled many months to come see you, and I survived, and I must know, what is it that you told my friend? What is the true secret to the meaning of life? Will you tell me? So the guru looks at him, opens his eyes, and says, my son. Of course, I will tell you the meaning of life. Come close. Oh. So the man walks close, and the guru and says, The secret to the meaning of life itself. The secret is that life is like a river. So the guy's like, Oh no. I didn't just travel all the way to Himalayas to almost die and starve to death and freeze to death to come hear that again. No way. Master, please explain to me what do you mean that life is like a river? What does that mean? The guru looks at him and says, Life is not a river? Ladies and gentlemen, there are many people on this earth that believe in things which have no basis, no proof at all, no, not even any evidence. They hear from this and this guru, and this and this person, who has this heebie-jeebie way of saying it, and then you challenge them and say, what do you mean by that? They say, they completely change their way of thinking. Oh, no, maybe, no, it doesn't mean that, it means this. No, no, it means that, it means that. Life is, life is like a river. What do you mean life is like a river? No, life is not, not like a river, it's like this. Just because a billion people are doing something, doesn't make you wrong if they don't have any proof against you. You are right into proven wrong. If they don't have any facts or proof or solid evidence against you, don't be intimidated by them. 
There's nothing to fear. You are right until proven wrong. And those are the five steps for becoming true, for truly and confidently believing in yourself and your ideas. Let's go into the third essential for becoming leadership material. Number three is that you must, at one point in time, be liked by the people, by the masses, whether in the beginning or the middle, at one point in time, they must come to like you because your enthusiasm and passion, no matter how great, is not enough to keep them close to you. They have to start to like you for who you are in order to stay with you through hard times and good times. To stay with you, they must like you. How do we, be, how do we become liked by people? How do we get people to like us? I have three simple steps to do this. Number one, be respectful of people. Respect people. That means that when you meet someone, whether you're, I don't care if you're a CEO, if you have a small employee who comes over to you, says, hi, how are you? You greet him nicely, with a smile, make him feel good about himself. Make him walk away with a feeling of positivity, of happiness when he meets you. Maybe people feel good when they meet you, no matter if they're lower than you, if they're higher than you, or your level. Make them feel good about meeting you, about talking to you. Be respectful to them. That's number one, the first step. Number two, second step. Be open-minded. Listen to people. Even if they're small, even if they're a garbage man. Or anyone. A small child. Everyone has some wisdom to share. Listen to them. Don't hear them. Listen. Process their ideas, their opinions. Think about it. You don't know how much you can gain. It's amazing how much you can gain just by listening to people's opinions and processing them yourself. No matter who they are, you can gain a tremendous amount of knowledge just by listening to everyone. Be open-minded. Number three, number three, the third step to get, becoming liked by people, by the masses, is that you must be honest. You must be honest. We see so many politicians and leaders today who promise this, they promise that. They'll give us this, they'll give us that. But when it comes to the time of power, when we vote them in, what do they do? They completely forget about it. They throw that right out the window. Now they want to do this way and that way and this way and that way. And then something bad comes out about, about something bad comes out about them. And they get, they get thrown down, they get disgraced, sometimes wind up in jail, sometimes killed. All because they lied in the beginning. All because they said stupid lies, made false promises. Be honest from the beginning. This way you stay out of trouble. There's nothing wrong with being honest. Being honest will only help you. Be honest. So the three steps for becoming li being liked by people, by the masses. So number one, be respectful of people. Number two is you must be open-minded. You must listen to everyone no matter who they are. Number three is that you must be honest. These three steps will help you to achieve the third essential in becoming a leader, which is to be liked by the people, by the masses. A father once walked in on his son into his son's room late in the afternoon, and he sees that his son is still in bed, sleeping away. The father looks at him and gets furious. Go to our son, just start shaking his son, son, get up! You know what time it is? Do you know what Abraham Lincoln was doing at your age? Abraham Lincoln at your age was studying, he was working, he was making a name for himself. He wasn't sleeping until the late afternoon like a bum. So the son turns over, tired, looks his father in the eye and says, Dad, when Abraham Lincoln was your age, he was president of the United States. We don't have to have to become an Abraham Lincoln. We don't have to become a Gandhi or a Martin Luther King Jr. But I guarantee each and every one of you that if you practice and you study these three essentials, that you will not only become a leader over yourself, a leader in your family and amongst your friends, but anyone who meets you, who has a chance to talk with you, 
will realize that you are a leader for the, amongst the people. You're a leader for the people. And they will, they will respect you and remember you. That being said, it would be my pleasure that if in the near future that I, can, that I would be able to use one of you sitting in this very room as my next example. Have a great night. All good?